There is something in space that threatens to cut off the Earth and to make space flight impossible. And this is the space junk. Crowding the low Earth orbit with satellites has a snowball effect on the number of debris orbiting around the planet. This is going to make the near Earth orbit unusable and very dangerous. Space junk is far from being what waste on Earth is. The space debris are actually parts from inactive satellites, rocket stages or other kinds of spacecraft. Until recently, everyone thought that space is practically limitless and vast enough that a collision between two objects is impossible. But on February the 10th, 2009, we received a wake-up call. That was when an Iridium satellite collided with an inactive satellite which had been out of service for 14 years. NASA estimated that the collision created approximately 1000 pieces of debris larger than 10 cm in addition to even more smaller ones. These debris will continue to orbit the Earth for many years and chances are that they are going to collide with other satellites producing new debris. The main problem with space debris is the snowball effect that they cause. With every collision and every launch satellite, the probability of new collision rises. If a satellite is hit even by the smallest pieces of debris, the consequences can be dramatic. Here on Earth, we rely on satellites for many things without even realizing it. Communications, GPS, weather forecasting and TV are just a few examples. What's more, space junk endangers the life of astronauts and even can bring down a launching spacecraft. Recently, it became clear that a special institution is needed to control the situation with the space debris. In early 2007, an anti-satellite missile test took place in low Earth orbit. A dead weather satellite was destroyed, creating hundreds of debris. Most of them will remain a hazard in our sky for centuries to come. Even if we stop launching satellites at all, we won't make the situation any better. People believe that what goes up must come down, but that isn't always true. Currently, in near-Earth orbit, there are around 100 million pieces of debris, smaller than 1 cm, 500,000 objects between 1 and 10 cm, and more than 21,000 debris, bigger than 10 cm. With every collision between objects, more debris are created. We call this the snowball effect of space junk. Over time, collisions in space will create more debris, and in turn, even more collisions. If no actions are taken, the cloud of space junk will continue to grow and eventually will surround the Earth entirely. At this point, we won't be able to do anything. After millions of years, the cloud will shrink in size and form stable Saturn-like rings. To solve the problem with space junk, we have to actively remove debris and inactive satellites from Earth's orbits. Recently, some space agencies started working on solutions. The Swiss Space Center announced Clean Space 1 and NASA suggested using lasers to slow down space junk. Unfortunately, every proposed solution consists of burning the debris in the atmosphere, but this isn't environmentally friendly and financially beneficial. This is the main reason why we created Green Space. We wanted to adopt a different approach to the problem and to find the best solution. As a start, the debris had to be collected and not to be burned in the atmosphere. We also wanted to recycle the old satellites and to use the materials to make new ones. This is the main goal of our settlement. The space debris can be very different in size, from dust particles to whole satellites. To handle such a variety of space junk, we need more than one sort of devices to gather it. That's why we designed two kinds of space cleaners with different methods for collecting debris. The first one we call the Type L because it is meant to collect the bigger pieces of space junk. It has four automated robotic arms, each with eight fingers. The spacecraft uses its arms to grab pieces of debris and to put them in the container inside. We designed Type S for the smaller pieces and dust like particles. These debris are hard to collect with a robotic hand and tend to move in groups or clouds. That's why we are using a different mechanism with Type S that works like a funnel. The spacecraft approaches the cloud of debris and collects them just by moving. Both types have a particle containers with volume of 850 cubic meters and four jet engines which are used to maneuver around pieces of debris. In the container there is a hydraulic press that compresses the debris gathered. When the container is full, the space cleaner returns to the settlement to unload. The main form of green space is a combination of tori and cylinder. The settlement consists of a central axis and nine rings, each with four spokes. 
For frictionless rotation, the quantum locking effect is used. The construction allows each ring to rotate with different velocity, creating artificial gravity as convenient. The engines, which the settlement needs, will be placed symmetrically, two on each ring, and respectively on each side of the axis. Additionally, on one side of the axis will be the asteroid catching device, the octopus. Since the main source of energy for green space is the solar energy, the outer sides of the settlement will be paneled with solar panels and solar paint. Each ring will have a specific function. In the first ring, the initial processing of the ore mine from the asteroid will happen. This ring is closest to the asteroid when one is ground. In the second will be the operation base for all the heavy industry. The third ring will produce and repair all kinds of space vessels and probes. It will be the connection between green space and the rest of the universe. The fourth will serve as a biosphere, which means full production and circulation of water and oxygen. The, the fifth ring will be the human living area. Many of the citizens will work here as well. The sixth will be a research center. All the science-related things will be conducted there. In the seventh ring will be situated the production of electronics and electrical components. The eighth will be the buffer zone for the collective debris. And in the last ring will be the administration and government of the settlement. There are three main stages of construction of the settlement. It starts with the assembly of the center axis. Second stage is the addition of the third, fifth and eighth rings. After these three are completed, the settlement can be populated and the space cleaning process can begin. The third and longest stage is the assembly of the last six rings. When we were designing the interior of the settlement, we took into account the ideas of the Eco City, which represents the future of architectural design. We wanted green space to have lots of sports centers and green areas so that the citizens can keep fit while being close to their homes. There are three types of buildings in the living area because we want the colonists to have choice where to live in. We also have a few squares where people can socialize and spend their free time. And now shortly about the future development of green space. After completing the cleaning of near Earth orbit and the graveyard orbit, the settlement will head to the Lagrangian points, where supposedly lots of space dust and small asteroids are gathered. The next stage is mining asteroids. From then green space will not only gain valuable materials, but it will also serve as a bodyguard of our planet, protecting it from the near Earth asteroids. For our first target, we chose the asteroid 2007 SJ. We observed it, determined its equatorial coordinates and tracked its orbit. However, green space will keep taking care for the near Earth orbit to be clean and safe, since space junk won't stop accumulating and will even become more as the space industry develops. We need to undertake something now. Like, exactly the same way, we need to undertake something about the global warming. In a way, there's some similarity between the two problems. If we don't do anything, we'll have big problems in the future.